Uh, yo, 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 this is Big Illinois 73, host of the Backyard Podcast, Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time. On the Built for This Network. Check us out. Hosted by yours truly. With my panel. My fam. You got the sister Kim Webb. The brother Dre MC1. The brother Anu Liel. And the brother H Rap B. No topic is off limit. We laugh and joke. We get serious. Try to be informative. Check us out. Once again, that's the Backyard Podcast, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. Let's go. West West, y'all. Bang, bang. Throw them W's up. West Side, when is this with your boy? D. Greatest from South Central. When is this at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? X Squad on my radio network. iHeartRadio, Spotify, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We got more. Yo, this is Big Illinois 73. I want you to tune in to the Backyard Podcast Music Sessions. Friday nights, 10 p.m. Central Time. On the Bill for This Network. On the Spreaker.com. Check us out. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Peace. Matt Barnes, if you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. You know what time it is? It is NBA Old School Time. So on today's episode, I'm going to talk about one of the most dangerous and most feared players of the 1990s. I'm, of course, talking about Anthony Mason. So I hope you're ready for some old school NBA. Let's get right into it. on hockey, but this guy had real basketball skills where he could go- guard a five and he could guard a one. This guy was a pretty good basketball player. Oh, outstanding basketball player. Now, where do we start? Let me take you back to the late 1980s to the beginning of the NBA career of Anthony Mason. Anthony Mason was drafted in 1988 with the 53rd pick by the Portland Trailblazers. After training camp, he was released and therefore played his first professional season in Turkey. Only one year later, he was picked up by the New Jersey Nets, but only received five minutes per game and therefore failed to make an impact. It was not looking good for Mason. The following season, he was signed by the Denver Nuggets, but only played three games. It looked like his career was over before it even began. But then Pat Riley, head coach of the New York Knicks, saw potential in the 6'7 all-rounder and gave him a contract in the Big Apple. 
For his coaching philosophy, Mason would be the ideal fit. A hard-nosed, no-nonsense player who was not afraid to do the dirty work. In that 1991 season, Mason would receive 27 minutes per game and prove that he could play on an NBA level. Former New York Knicks coach Jeff Van Gundy on Anthony Mason. He was overlooked early in his career and for whatever reason had a hard time getting to the right team at the right time. But when he got to the Knicks, uh, he was not only a very good defender, uh, particularly an individual defender, but he had a tremendous handle. Uh, he uh, was a tremendous, tremendous passer. And having this rare skill set, you would wonder why nobody but the New York Knicks would give him a real shot. The next couple of years, Mason would turn into a big part of New York's success, not only providing an intimidating presence on the floor, but also most of the times guarding the toughest player on the opposing team. Anthony Mason was like wine. Year by year, he was getting better. And at the age of 30, he was the starting small forward on the New York Knicks team and was putting up some solid numbers. And every once in a while, he would have some incredible games. Mason with a pretty move on Campbell, who has the height of court, as he just did. Lakers lead by two. Oh, nice pass. Mason for Starks. And the game is tough. Nick Paul with 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Mason, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason up front. The tip by Mason, it counts, and the foul. Three points. Again, the good interior passing. Oh. Mason was able to whip around. Mason given the room. Worthy showing little respect for the outside shot. So again, Mason goes around his man. Anthony Mason was now an established NBA player. Unfortunately, over many years, his basketball skills were overlooked because of his intimidating presence and his fights and scuffles he would have every once in a while. At that point, he was one of the most feared players in the entire NBA. Only the big boys were willingly standing up to Mason. In 1996, Anthony Mason was then traded to the Charlotte Hornets, a move that would be a good opportunity for him. Here he would improve again, having the best season of his career, showing his great all-around basketball skills and proving that he was more than this physical monster. The more games he was playing in a Charlotte Hornets uniform, the better he got. On defense, there weren't many players that were better than Mason. Michael again. Not this time. And Pippen's pass is intercepted by Mason. Three on two if they hurry. Here's Mills again. Michael's turnaround. Spins out. Rebound Rice. Mason's going to do. He said, I'm going to try to get him off the block. I want him to do everything fading away from the basket. Make it be one and done. There's the rebound. Now you can run once again. Mason is guarding uh, Carter, and that is a very tough matchup for Vince Carter, who uses a screen by Davis in and out, and Mason the rebound. Just under one minute left in this first quarter. Anthony Mason now guarding. Akeem Elijah on the ball is knocked away. Houston has never left. Mason able to swat it away. Shot pocket five. Elijah Wan with the turnaround. When Anthony Mason joined the Charlotte Hornets, he helped that team to be relevant in the Eastern Conference. They were a yearly playoff contender, and when they did make the playoffs, Mason would play his best basketball. Just ask Dikembe Mutombo. He said he didn't want him to have the pressure of missing two or three shots early on. Well, I say make them. Control couldn't solve. See, if I'm Dave Collins, I don't like that. Because that's an advantage for the Atlanta Hawks. Mason hits it. Laylock sets up left side. And Devots came out to front. They throw it over him. And it's a turnover Atlanta. Here's Mason. His first two shots. Body Devots gets his first basket. And three seconds to go. Here's Mason. Yes! Big shot. Smith has filled. Anderson on Mason. Nice pass. Anthony Mason to Waddy Mason gets the Rice miss. And a fresh 24. Leitner guarding Anthony Mason. Oh, and so goes into the paint, puts it up. In Charlotte, Mason turned into one of the most popular players of the Eastern Conference. And even though he wasn't an NBA All-Star yet, it would not hinder him to get TV commercials. Rotten tomatoes. 
coffee ground, eggshells, gum wrappers, corn dog sticks. <laughs> Potato peels, broken bottles, pigeon bones, <laughs> In the 1998-99 season, Anthony Mason had to sit out due to a serious arm injury. The following year, he then joined the Miami Heat, where he became a first-time NBA All-Star at the age of 34. Only two years later, Mason would then end his career with the Milwaukee Bucks at the age of 36. Mason had a solid NBA career, and many old-school NBA fans love him because of his tenacity and his great all-around basketball skills. Unfortunately, not so long ago, we got the terrible news that Anthony Mason isn't with us anymore. The NBA is grieving tonight over the loss of all-star and former sixth man of the year, Anthony Mason. Now, uh, here... At the Heat, uh, when he was an all-star and he really stepped up and, and, and was a warrior, uh, he was defined by competition and toughness. Uh, you could rely on that uh, fierce com competitiveness. Uh, and you just don't think uh, that these type of things are, are, are going to happen. I, I'd be remiss not to mention my, my man Mace and, right. uh, when he came to the team because we came in around about the same time. and. Uh, you know, he was a big part of the success that we had during the 90s. And uh, Mace and uh, the haircuts and right. the uh, charisma that he had. And, you know, he kept everything loose, you right. know, and, and, and we really enjoyed that. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please do me a favor. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. Also, I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. It's really appreciated. And I guess I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. You all be healthy. Take care and goodbye. This video is brought to you by SimplySeattle.com. It's the only place to find the world's largest selection of Super Sonics gear. They have everything you could imagine to celebrate the Sonics. Autograph pieces for the Rayman and Gary Payton to boot. Shipping all over the world, so let's keep the Sonics dream alive at SimplySeattle.com. Click the link in the description box and get 10% off. Check it out now. Yo, 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 this is Afro, a.k.a. All Foes Reach Out, and you're listening to Built For This Network. Yes, sir. On the building, they say, wow. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, as usual. You got your man H Rap B coming at you live and direct. This is the End of the Bench podcast, featuring myself and my main man Joe from Houston. As usual, I want to let you know that in the event that you're unable to complete the podcast, you can check us out on YouTube. You can check us out on Spotify. You can check us out on iHeartRadio. You can check us out on Deezer, Podcast Deezer, uh, 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 iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, Google Cast and podcast addict or wherever you get your podcast downloaded that's where you can reach us at we are also doing a live stream on youtube right now just go to the end of the bench uh the end of the bench and then you can also get us on spreaker and youtube on the built for this network page we are on built for this network this is h rap b this is joe from houston what's good joe talk to me oh man i'm good man when uh i want to start by saying man happy Valentine's day to my fellow brothers, uh, shout out to the side, 110 years, keep moving. Um, besides that, great week of sports. Finally got finished with football. Got a new, you know, finish the regular season of football. Wild card coming up. Basketball is in full swing. Man, I'm excited. Yeah, man, salute to the brothers of Cap Out Side. Like, got a lot of friends who are part of that same fraternity, that same world. And, uh, uh, I want to say Happy New Year to all the uh, listeners and supporters. 
Thank you for listening to us for all these years. Thank you for the support. Um, man, uh, again, if you want to check us out, we are doing a live stream on YouTube.com. You can come in, click the link, go to YouTube, The End of the Bench, T-H-A-E-N-D-O-F-B-A-B-E-N-C-H. I'll go to the chat room, put it in there. We are going to do a live stream. Just checking it out, man. And, uh, you know, there's a chat room in there. We're going to have some fun with this, man. We're going to have some fun. And uh, uh, maybe I need to be looking at the camera in uh, the bench. But, uh, you know, you're not really you're not really tuning in and look at me. You look, you're tuning in and listen to me. So if you're tuning in and listen, don't make a difference to what I'm doing right now anyway, right? With that being said, it has been a hell of a week, as usual, for sports. It's always a hell of a week. You have bowl games, you have NCAA and full effect. You got coaches being hired soon to be, I mean, coaches being fired soon to be hired. You have a, a myriad of things that's going on in the sports world. The NFL playoffs, the NCAA playoffs, college basketball, college football. Everything is, everything is going on right now. This is the top of the year. Shout out to anybody who loves sports right now because you should be in your element having a great time. Big ups to you. Now, with that being said, man, we, you know what? Since the NBA is still at this early stage, I want to talk to you. First, I want to talk to you about a couple things before we get into the meat of sports. Uh, I was... Uh, I rarely do this, and I try not to do this. Uh, it's this guy. He probably has the most popular podcast in the world right now. He goes by the name of Vlad, DJ Vlad from Vlad TV. The reason I try not to listen to him is because, in my opinion, Vlad does not set. Uh, 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 he does not paint a pretty picture for the culture. What Vlad does is, what Vlad does is put the people in the culture. And what I what what we call in the hood a trick bag, and uh, why I say he put us in a trick bag is this man. When Vlad does his thing, he asks questions, and a less mature individual won't be able to handle those questions. They'll they'll give direct answers, and, and you know, as an adult, intelligent people know you don't have to talk too much. You say what you need to say, and you shut the hell up. You know what I mean? So, uh, Vlad. At presented one of my favorite guests on his platform. He's one of the few people that I watch me on there because he's intelligent enough to pivot and put Vlad in his place, right? So, with that being said, Vlad, what he does is this. He'll go, hey man, yo Joe from Houston, how you feel about this? And it's really talking about somebody else's personal business. And I don't like that because you don't need to talk about anybody else's personal business to put yourself in a better light. But he made a comment that one John Spider Solid, former the Detroit Pistons, former Bull, former Miami Heat, former Toronto Raptor, and, and uh, former Laker, won championships with the Bulls, Lakers, and Pistons. I mean, Lakers and Pistons, exactly. And uh, he said, yo, um, look, do you see how, what's going on with James Hart? You see how much money he makes? And that's what I want to ask you about. Why is it that we only talk about athletes' money when we're talking about the bras. When you're talking about people from other cultures, you hardly ever hear anybody's money being talked about. And I I don't like that. What are your opinions? And then I give you my point of view or whatever, whatever. It's very weird to regards to what's going on. Uh, and you always say that, you know, sports is the way to get that minority out of the field. So it's, it's more so, um, that's what he's trying to push all that money. Like, as far as it goes, Matthew Stafford, for me, to take the name out for me, like that. But let's just say Matthew Stafford. Didn't he come for money? Or like, uh, what was it? Like, Sam Bradford came for money. So it's like, once they get these big contracts, it's like they don't sell. It's like, oh, well, he had money before him. So that's why they really don't talk about it. But since we came from, quote, unquote, nothing, we came from the bricks of it. Oh, they say the most important, I mean, the most popular guy is the backup quarterback. So, 
was like, that man's making some money out there. But he's not playing. He's not playing at all. He's he not playing at all. Unless something drastic happens. You know, unless some Willie Dean and stuff happens. <laughs> right. It has to be something drastic or we don't even know his name. Right. Right. So as far as it goes, he doesn't have any stats. So we have nothing to compare it to, but he's still making a $5 million. He's making more than some starting quarterback. But can I make $2 million? Mm-hmm. I, only, I think he made a million. I think he made a million. So right now, so right there. So the backup quarterback is no stack, and no one talks about his money. But Cam did his thing. James, like I said, James Hart's doing his thing, and he didn't talk about it. Exactly. If James Hart wanted to come, James Hart wanted to come in here and look at him, what's looking like Mark Henry by the body and drop 40 every night, do your thing, bro. <laughs> do your thing. And that's exactly why I am, man. I mean, we looking at a dude. I mean, and, and, and see, everybody want to do this thing about, hey, man, James Harden is fat and he this and he that. And Vlad was like, he making, he making $35 million and he coming in fat. But uh, what I don't understand is this. Watch, watch this. Most most of the people who tuning in right now, shout out to Ben from BS3. Shout out to number one Chief Rocker. Shout out to D-Great. Shout out to my, my sister, man, my, my homegirl since 1985, 1985 of Sabrina. And if y'all want to, again, come to the, uh, uh, come to the, uh, uh, chat room on, uh, Inst- uh nah, I'm going to say Instagram, uh, on, uh, YouTube, show a brother some love, you know, or just stay on tr- uh, Spreaker, it's all good. But Michael Schumacher, this, here's the thing, you can be the highest paid person in NASCAR, you can be the highest paid person in a lot of these sports that most people from our culture don't pay attention to. And guess what? You get paid way more than football and basketball player. Check this out. Vlad was like, didn't he just sign a contract? Didn't Giannis Antetokounmpo just sign a contract making $35 million a year? That's insane. And this is why I love John Sally. John Sally's response was this. Well, Michael Schumacher making eighty-five million dollars a year. Is he winning all the races? We don't even know what Jimmy Johnson making because Jimmy Johnson got the oil, uh, uh, the oil, or what? It, I always forget this damn word. Whatever. With sponsorships, uh, uh, all mechanics, sponsorships. He got all that stuff coming in his pocket. He probably got some type of shoe deal. Uh, uh, you know, Pennzoil and this and that and Chevy and Ford and. We see these guys on TV commercial, spark plug, all that stuff, right? And he's making $85 million a year from his team and nothing. You go over to the uh, Premier League in soccer. Remember, I can't think his name. I think it's Messi. He was fried. He was done. And this chump, they paid him $150 million to come to America. They bought him out for 150 million, and then when he got, them, they gave him a bag. And I'm like, oh, so we ain't gonna talk about that. We, we we ain't gonna talk about that. But that's what I, you know. And then people people want to talk about the bros. People want to talk. What's up? I got my man number one chief rock in the chat room. Much love, appreciate it, brother. Thank you for hitting both of them. If at all possible, man, you got the link. Hit the link in the chat room, please. Like, share, then come on here to the uh uh. To the uh, YouTube, get down and on the song. Uh, look, look, look! This guy, Big Illinois. He, we, we ain't read no more Big Illinois check all all night. He say, "Why it ain't no uh, uh, Tim Duncan post that Joe High?" That's what he got him. That's that's the Tim Duncan poster right there, right there. Nada. Oh, oh. Come on. Right, 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 right. He in Texas. He ain't in San Antonio. But uh. Right, right. And if you want to call in the number 773. Uh-huh. Order you want to put them on, put them in that order. I don't care. They want with it. They want to order. If you want to call 773-727-797-2409, 773-797-2409 is the number. But yeah, man, and that's what I'm, you know, and you know, again, it, it always, people always wonder why I go cultural or racial. It's like, Look at what y'all do to us. It's like 
We don't know. Nobody ever talked about Larry Bird's paycheck. Nobody ever talked about nobody else's paycheck. But when it comes to the bros, it's always about their money. You know how many scrubs in the National Football League that don't look like me and you? How many scrubs in baseball that don't look like me and you? Scrubs in basketball that don't. Steve Kerr was a raw, raw bone scrub. He got he was drafted by the Phoenix Suns because he played at the University of Arizona. No disrespect to Steve Kerr, but you can't tell me hundreds of Division One schools, hundreds of Division Two schools, hundreds of Division Three schools, hundreds of junior college ball players, all that. And Steve Kerr was the best y'all come up with. No. Oh. And I'm cool right. with it. I ain't mad at you, Steve. But, hell, you mean to tell me Harold Miner was the best joker out there? No. But what I'm saying is this. When it comes to the bros, it's always, look how much money he made. And look at what he's doing. And then you got, as right. usual, the Book right. of McFarlane's of the world. And that's what I'm going to go to next. But uh, then you got people always pointing to the money. How many scrub-ass quarterbacks have the, just the Detroit Lions and the Browns paid. Just those two franchises. The Detroit Lions and the Browns. How many bums have they paid? Oh, you breaking up a little bit, Joe. The past, the past few years, I mean, you got it. Huh? Go. Keep going. You got Benzel, um, like, Couch. They, 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 yeah, they made it. Thank you. But you know, but it's not that. Like you said multiple times before, we understand that the Cleveland Browns just can't get it right. So we understand they throwing this money at this at this quarterback situation. They're going to mess it up anyway. So it, we understand that. We understand that at this point. I don't. They're going to mess it up anyway. No, no. I don't understand because we're in a situation to where as it's always, they're always. You never hear about all this money that they threw at Adam Smith. You never hear about the Heath Shulers. You never hear about the Tim Couches of the world. But when somebody say scrub, they go straight to uh, my man from uh, LSU, uh, play for the Raiders. You right. see, uh, uh, right. uh, yeah, you go, they go straight to the bros. Right. Like, uh, uh, Jamarcus Russell, Achilles Smith. You always go to the bros, but I, what about all them time? With Todd Blackledge in the 1983 draft, pick before Dan Marino. Pick 10, 12, 15 spots before Dan Marino, and he was horrible. Ken, Ken O'Brien was average or a little above average. How many times talk about Ryan Lee? Exactly. Ryan Lee, but Jamarcus Russell is the poster boy for being a bum. Uh, uh, anytime you got a, a bruh, he the poster boy for being a bum, but these other guys, they say, well, you know, it, yeah, it is. No, no. And that's what that's why I'm tired of that. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of it. Johnny Manziel got a chance in every single football league. He got a, he even, they invented a new football league, gave him a shot, and he stunk it up and down. It's just crazy, man. Got kicked out. Yeah, he he and in some of these leagues he didn't play his way out. He got run out the league. And people, oh, man, well, you know, I don't know, well, you know, this, that, and the third. No, nah, we know. But, and then and then they, people get mad when you bring up race. I oh, know it's not always about race. Uh, in a lot of cases, it is just about race. It's about race. And people don't want to acknowledge it. People do not want to acknowledge it. So, basically, it is what it is. It is what it is. You lose. There it is. Now, with that being said, um... Right. Next topic, we, we put ourselves in a situation to where as soon as the, you know, we've, we've come to a point in society where as you can't really criticize the brothers like you want to, but then they hire these brothers like Anthony Booger McFarlane and he comes out and kicks the brothers right in the face. Did you get a chance to listen to what Boogie McFarlane said? If so, what are your thoughts? I, I heard it, and I had mixed feelings. And I, I know I hate to be on the fence on this type of stuff, but it's like, I understand.
understand what he was trying to say. It may not have been, it may have been the way he said it or the platform where they presented it. That's why I have a problem with it. But I understand what he was saying. Like, we talked about it last week. It's about these, these new athletes are looking for their brand before they actually want someone to feel. And that's where the issue kind of is. It's like, hey, let your game speak for your brand. It's going to come. It's going to come. Everybody not the highest, you know, the highest draft pick in regards to the top prospect. But as far as it goes, once you get on that field or that court and you do your thing, the branding will come. It will come. So, I, again, I understand what he's saying. I hate the way it was put out. And that's probably more so the issue I have to have. But overall, I don't have a problem with what he said. I, you know what? After, after uh, listening again, bro, the problem, I, I do have a problem. I, I have a problem with everything he said. Uh, I'm tired of having to understand where people are coming from. I'm sick of that. Oh, well, see, if you know, if you got a PhD in, in metabolics and, 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 and you're, you're a damn Buddhist, uh, you know, you're a yogi and you can decipher all the universal things. Nah, man. Speak, shoot straight. Speak your mind, speak your peace. It's okay to say something that's disagreeable, so to speak. You know, if you want to use that terminology, you can, people can disagree with you. It's okay. It's okay if people disagree with you. But when he, all he said was these black athletes, the, the league is 80% black, and they worried about their brand. Yeah, but what was... If you okay, what's the difference in being black, worried about your brand, and being average to mediocre, and being Johnny Manziel, being Tim Couch, being any quarterback the Raiders have drafted, and I, since Steve Berline, and Steve Berline came out in '88, 32 years, 33 years ago now. Uh, any quarterback not named John Elway that the Broncos. Uh, uh, have drafted anybody nice. not nice. named Philip nice. Rivers, Dan Fouts, or, or 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 this new boy, the Chargers is drafted. If you if you're mediocre and stink, you stink. It not taking advantage of opportunities is not exclusively attached to our community, and I'm sick of people saying that. That's something that is. Oh uh, well, you know what he meant. Yeah, but how did you hear it? Because when people say something, when we say something that's disparaging against other people, people don't say, well, like like if I get on here tonight and I make a statement that could be perceived anti-Semitic, homophobic, or any other anti, nobody's going to be going, yo, uh, CH rap meant it like this. They're going to, a million people start tuning into this, it's going to be like, the bigot on Bill for this network. The bigot on YouTube. That's all they're gonna say. Nobody's gonna be like that. YouTube gonna shut the page down. We ain't getting no run anymore, and we gonna hope to find another outlet. That's it. That's all. They they remove this recording, and that's it. It ain't gonna be no. Oh, see, this is what H rap meant. They're not going there. They're not going there, and that's what I'm tired of. We have to stop doing that, man. And uh, I'm just sick of it, man. Now, I'm not going to get into that. I just saw, look, I'm looking at my list. I'm not going to get into that until way later, right? I'm not going to get into that until way later. But what I am going to do is we're going to get into the NCAA. The National Association of College Athletics Championship round for college football is in full effect. It's only two rounds. First of all, how do you feel about the, them only having four teams in the playoffs? And then I ask you the second part of that question. And, okay, so in regards to the college football championship, like we've been, they, they've always been talking about expanding it, you know, since the start. And we've always felt like four teams was upsetting because that 15 is always going to be mad. If we move to 18, that 19 is going to be mad. So as of right now, this is. 2020 was a whole different year, so I think expanding it, not knowing exactly what all was going on, that really hurt their the 
mind space actually trying to move on or trying to expand to more things. So as far as it goes, it was it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm with that. I had an issue again because Ohio State didn't have the prerequisites for us, the amount of games, but <laughs> they did that. So they they showed that they should have been there. So uh, in regards to it, hey, Ohio State, Alabama. Let me interrupt you. Actually, man, Mandeli Mandeleon put up a compelling argument argument on, on Chief Rocker Show Monday, man. Mandeleon made the statement, hell, the whole Big Ten missed games. So don't just point it at Ohio State. And to make it clear, I'm a University of Illinois football fan because I was born and raised in the state of Illinois. Uh not that I love them like that, but when they went when they on TV, I'm watching them. You know, I ain't watching Georgia. I'm not watching all these other people. I'm watching Illinois. I wouldn't have wanted to. So, right. Mandela Young kind of turned me when he said that. Because I did dumb enough. Duh. I'm, in, I'm living in the state of Illinois. I live in Big Ten country. I'm a Big Ten fan. So, for people who thought, oh, man, you just don't like Ohio State. Nah, I'm rolling, I'm rolling with the middle of the map. You know what I'm saying? Get Maryland up out of there. I'm sorry. Uh, uh. One of the, one of the yeah. listeners listening is living there. Oh, Dicky Dale, yeah. get Maryland about it. Penn, yeah, Penn State is ah, yeah, but yeah, but Penn State too, Penn State too. But uh, it's like ah, it's like that with Penn State with me. You know what I mean? But uh, and maybe because you know Penn State used to be a good team growing up. You know, you you, you make a, you make assortments, you make you make exceptions. Excuse me. For teams that you know, no, no, for situations, but like, um, but so I, I kind of changed on that, but I still feel that way. But I understand why an Ohio State and or slash Big Ten fan will, will take that route. Go ahead, finish your thoughts. I just want to throw that in there, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's understandable. I mean, because truly, if, if it was Alabama, I mean, if I was uh, the biggest Ohio State fan, I would be probably making that same argument. But my DB is the novice house football fan, house I look in. I'm never going to see the y'all in regards to what's, what's in, uh, who she playing what and what not. I've been asking that question for years now. So I've never understood. I'm not going to lie. But as far as it goes, well, I would say the win, they play, they get bad, they get a championship game. They just get bad. I mean, as much as we want to say, hey, you only had five games. Well, they showed, they asked me six games. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Well, the seven game because that's the championship game. But, yeah, yeah, same difference, same well, difference. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, dude, Ohio State Buckeyes is a damn near protein, team, though. They damn near a pro team. They low-key a pro team. So, it ain't nothing not to like about Ohio State, man. I mean, remember remember a couple years ago, I was when we were on air, I was cracking the jokes. I'm going to move to Ohio and grab one of these chicks. One of these seven year old sons with the deadbeat dad, I'm getting paid in couple years. Remember, I was selling it. I'm so I ain't mad at Ohio, but it is what it is, man. But I got mad respect for them, man. And I know one thing, uh, I know one thing is this, uh, 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 one thing is this. I'm not messing around with the uh, uh, with that Notre Dame bullshit. Y'all, Notre Dame can kiss my ass. I'm telling you, I'm starting to believe. I swear to God, I'm starting to believe that they put Notre Dame in the uh, NCAA championship game so they could get curb stomped. Every time they get in there, they get their ass curved. They get their mouth put on the curb and stomped in the back of the head. They get curb stomped every time. I, I, I love it because I hate Notre Dame. I, they get their ass beat, and I love it, man. I freaking love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let Notre Dame keep getting in and let them keep getting their ass whooped by Ohio State, by Michigan State, by motherfucking Canada State, by California State, any damn state. Just let them get their ass kicked. I, I can't stand Notre Dame, son. No way, no how. Right. It, 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 only way I'm rooting for Notre Dame. Right, right, man. The only way I'm rooting for Notre Dame if they if the Ku Klux Klan get a team. Anything short of the Ku Klux Klan or something like that, the white supremacist football university, I'm rooting for them. Uh, my man, uh, Chief Rock said that coach ain't shit in the big game. 
fuck Brian Kelly too, man. Unless he come to Illinois, then he the man. But as long as he in Notre Dame, fuck Brian Kelly. I ain't trying to get man. I freaking hate that bum, and I cannot stand that bum. Man. He is a B A U M bum. But uh, I ain't trying. To, I ain't trying to get none of that with you, man. If it's Notre Dame, I promise you, dog. You think I'm kidding? I do not rock with, and you know, for whatever reason, people in Illinois seem to have some type of kinship with them bombs. I'm not rocking with them goofballs. I'm not rocking with nothing. The Golden Domers, if Ohio State playing them, if, if Michigan State playing them, any state, I know I wouldn't give a damn. Any team playing Notre, my favorite team in college is the University of Illinois, and whoever beat Notre Dame. Those, that's my favorite team. If you beat Notre Dame, sign me up. So, right. I'm in. I'm in like Flynn. I'm telling you. That's where I'm at. Right. I'm telling you. Oh, I got you, Rocco. Just hit me up after the show. I got you. We on this now, man. Me and you, we on this. Like, I don't know if Knox want to do no live show on air, but YouTube wouldn't let him. But uh, I got you, Rocco. I like, I do, I, I ain't going to lie. I like this. I like this. Yeah, I'm dope, man. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm kind of cute. <laughs> nah, but... <laughs> yeah! But, uh... <laughs> but, uh hey, but back to Notre Dame. Back to that Notre Dame. Hey, yeah, I ain't letting me up on Notre Dame. They, they, they going down. But this leads us to the national championship game. I, 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 say, you don't, I say you don't like Notre Dame. I mean, I don't know if this is more something overall, like, about the are there any players that came out of Notre Dame? Oh, yeah, there's tons of them. I got a cut. Hey, I got a couple cousins that went to Notre Dame. I got a cousin who just ran away from Notre Dame like three years ago. He was a linebacker. I wasn't rooting for his ass either. If BJ, if BJ would have kept playing, man, my son was a hell of a fine linebacker, man. He was an undersized linebacker, but he was a hell of a linebacker. Look, look, okay. DJ first play ever in football, in high school football, was a, a strip sack, a sack, a strip. He popped up and made a block so the dude can run for a touchdown. That's my son first play. And after a while, he just got bored with it because he played football. Oh, no, no. He he he, he, did, he wasn't no football guy. He, he he looked at some of my trophies. He was like, who trophies are these? I was like, those mine. He's like, yeah, okay. You think I can play football? And he had never touched the football. And I was like, it's kind of late, but we can do something. And I told him what to do. He went out there and made the damn team. And it was the rest was history. He played one season. But see, my son, as much as I talk about sports and life sports, I'll tell you a story about me. You ever seen the episode of the Cosby show? When Theo uh, uh, said he wanted to play football and he started working on his uh, touchdown dance, my son did the same thing. So. BJ was like, yeah, and when I score, I'm going to do this touchdown dance like Chad Johnson. I'm like, bro, what you mean? Ain't no touchdown dance. He was like, look, Joker, I'm doing this dance. I don't want to hear that. That's what I'm doing. With. Let me get in and you're going to see this. And then he, he got on the team. Look, look, again. Show you how much BJ just don't give a damn about uh, uh, uh he just don't give a damn about uh sports. BJ quit Little League. I think he quit uh base organized baseball in like seventh grade. He go to high school. He tried for the team. He was killing. So I say, B, what's up? He come home, I'm laying on the couch. I say, what's up? What happened? He say, man. No, no, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything for him for like a month. I wasn't thinking because he don't like sports. He'll watch sports as a father-son activity. He ain't watching sports because that's his thing. He like, I'm kicking with Pops. Or we, like, he liked going to the Sox games. Nick kicking at the Sox games. That was our thing. And so when BJ was like, he came home for a little while, and then it just dawned on me. I say, damn, hey, man. Are we watching TV together? I look up and say, hey, man, um. Uh, why with the baseball team? Oh, man, I ain't make it. I'm like, oh, well, you know. And then I was like, uh. He's, I say, so what happened? Did, did you just rust it? He's like, no, nah, man. Uh, I went out there. I thought I was doing my thing. And then when it was over, they told me to come back. But I ain't feel like coming back. 
I said, they told you to come back. Yeah, they cut me. I say, DJ, that's, that means come back tomorrow. That's how that's how little he is in the sports. He like, oh, that's what that meant. And we just kept watching the TV. I laughed because I didn't want to. And he was, man, my son, I still remember my first son, first at back. You know how little kids just swing and anything. I had always taught him, wait for your pitch. First bat, he was like, and he he he, he got a walk. No, no, he got a walk on his first at bat. And he would throw me a wing. He said, that wasn't my and then I asked him. I said, he said, he said that first one wasn't my pitch. And then the next one, I mean he's he's a cold blooded shortstop, he was the man, but and that's something I regret. Like, because he was like, You mind if I quit? And I didn't want to be that ex athlete trying to live by cash and through his kid. So I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, you quit, man. The same thing my old Chief Rocker said. Right, right. I was like, yeah, yeah, you can quit. And I was like, I should have pressured him. <laughs> I should have pressured him. But I'll be, I'll be telling them now, every time we watch somebody sign a big contract and we chilling, I say, see, you could have got us out of poverty. It's your fault we still in pop. I tease him about that all the time. Chief Rocker said the same thing. My oldest son never played sports until he came out and lived with me. In his freshman year, he became a beast that had, that had good size. Yeah, man, they don't they don't do sports like us. It's the video games and and, 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 and you know what, though? I ain't mad. You know, I'm going to sound super sexist, but hey, I'm h rap. That's what I am. You know what I mean? But, uh, they be on the chicks early though, so I ain't mad. They be on the chicks early, so <laughs> I deal with it. no girls for this. What they don't know is that you Oh yeah, you ain't gotta say nothing to the chick. Yeah, but but you know what? They the funny thing is, man. The, the younger dudes got more confidence than we had, so they cooled on the chicks, man. But yeah, hey man, I swear to God, I always be like, uh, uh, I should have, I should have pushed them, I should have pushed them. With that being said, man, back to the NCAA, the uh, the Clemson tie, uh, uh, the Alabama's Alabama, Alabama Clemson tie versus. The Ohio State Buckeyes buck up. DJ Knox is in the building. Knox, I'm sending you this link, sign Right there. Get at me. Uh uh. Uh uh. Yeah, man. We got DJ Knox in the building, man. Uh be, be, go for this network brotherhood in the building. We strong. We we steady. But uh who you got? Why? And what did you see? Hey man. Get off your phone. Uh, we can see you now. You can't talk on the phone. We can uh, see you uh, now. Uh, I'm messing uh, with you. I'm messing. I'm messing with you. I'm messing. With you. I kid. I kid. I kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, the research one. Um, in the process, I mean, it's 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 it's
I don't want to see no 7-3 game. Go to hell with 7-3. KMA 7-3. I don't want to see that. No way, son. But, uh, but, uh, 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 no, no, no. I want to shoot out. We want to shoot out. We want some big play. I mean, these are two of the most talented teams in, in college football today. Uh, uh, Ohio State, they usually have somebody in the uh, highest rank contention. It would have probably would have had. I'm sure Justin Fields would have been in there. And, uh, uh, the goddamn quarterback, the backup running back, and the wide receiver from uh, 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 Alabama. And then they got that super defense out there, man. Hey, man. Cats out here killing it, man. So, ain't nobody trying to see no snooze fest. Snooze your ass. You, you keep rocking, saying, yes, sir. Don't nobody want 7 3. That would be a great game. With these two teams, see, that's the beauty in, in, in sports. Whether it's a. It's a 9-7 baseball game where the pitches is trash, but, you know, they going at it. Or if it's a 18-inning, 1986 New York Mets versus uh, 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 New York Mets versus the uh, Houston Astros, uh, Billy Hatchet and that crew against Dale Strawberry and them, a cliffhanger. As long as you in it, we don't really care. People at that point, championship game, let it be a shootout. Like, even though, because, cause, okay, the Patriots, a lot of people love to hate the Patriots. Man, the Patriots ain't shit. Fuck them. Okay, if you lived in that Boston, New England area, the Patriots be shit. But don't nobody want to watch that Ram Patriots Super Bowl from two years ago. That was a snooze fest. They were bum riffing. They were bum riffing. Nobody wants to see that, man. I don't, I don't want to see that. I'm a sports guy. I like talking crazy about sports. Like like I said, people like Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith with their pure ignorance have ruined sports talk for me. You know, watching ESPN for me because when we were younger, Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott and them, you felt like they knew what they were talking about. Rich Eisen and all these guys. They uh and, and yeah, rest in peace, Stuart Scott. They just reading off the teleprompter, you know. But yeah, man, I, I don't I don't have a preference to win. I want it to be a million five. To a million four, I want somebody to. I want it to be tied up at the end of the game, and somebody throw a hail mary. It bounces around the end zone three times. Somebody catch it. And if if it ain't your, if it, if it's your team on the end of the hail mary, I want you to run it all the way back out. Or and if your team catch it and win, then boom. The, don't nobody want a uh, three, six, eight, five. No, no. Ain't no time for no damn shooter or uh, 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 defensive struggles. No, struggle your ass. And we feel the same thing you did. Like, yeah, they, yeah. They that, like, those, the national championship I always remember is the Texas and USC. And it's just, yes. That was the most exciting one I've ever seen because it came down to the final seconds and it was like, okay, we well, got the ball last for me. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's it. Last person with the ball win the game. You know, baddest one hit me, damn that man. So I'm with I'm with you on that, man. I ain't trying. I, 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 y'all keep that. Y'all keep that defensive struggle. Y'all keep that damn defense struggle. Y'all can have that because ain't nobody trying. I'm not trying to hear. I'm not trying to hear it. I'm not trying to hear it. Of course, I just want it to be a good game. If, as long as it's a good game, I can take whatever y'all got coming my way. It's uh uh it is what it is. It ain't what it used to be. And um, but you know, like I, I I don't have a dog in this fight. I just want it to be a very good game. Uh, it should be Ohio State is healthier than everybody because they didn't play as many games. Uh, uh, uh Alabama's damn near got a damn uh they got a damn near pro team on the field every time they step on the field. So both these, like Chief Rockers said in the chat room. Both these groups have top three, top five recruiting classes every year. It's going to be, it's a party. They finna get it in. I love it. Keep it pumping. I'm down. I'm down for the cause. That's all I, that's all I got to say in regards to that. But uh, I'm with it, man. I mean, ain't nobody trying to not see no shooting, no scoring. Like I said, I do not want to see no damn, what was the damn uh, uh, New England Patriots versus the uh, Rams Super Bowl. Y'all could y'all could have kept that shit. Y'all could have tape delayed that shit and played the 1975 Super Bowl with the uh, Dallas Cowboys and the uh, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers because that shit was horrible. Man. That was that was that shit was straight morning, bro. Ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. 
That shit was that's, that was that stunk. But with that being said, who you picking and we who you picking and who you got for the highs? Well, you probably you you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, I'm going with um, Right. I'm going to go with Ohio State. So I'm going to take Justin Fields. And if I'm wrong, he ain't even in the contention. Give it to him anyway. Because he kicked ass for five minutes. There we go. Right, right. Uh, and wide receiver, I think his last name is Jones. Out of uh, Alabama. The dude is amazing. He, uh, 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 he is clearly best player in the nation and what I'm glad about this year they have moved into a situation to where as uh, um, they moved into a situation to where as uh, uh, they're giving it to the best player this year not the best quarterback because I'm so fucking tired of that oh this is the number one quarterback in the league so he might be the best pro so he gets the highest trophy not the most electric not the most dynamic player not the guy that takes over the game the quarterback because you know what? You don't need... Gino Toretta showed you you can win the Heisman Trophy and be double bag of doodle. You can be straight bum riffic. You can be bum riffic. Man, straight garbage truck juice. You're not going to be a good pro. You're not going to be nothing but a dude who played for the youth. But with that being said, I don't... I'm, you know, I, if I had a coin, I would literally flip the coin... Oh, I do. Uh, here's this Ohio State tails is Bama flipping the coin. Ohio State by six. Right. I, I just want it to be a good game. I ain't trying to hear nothing else, man. I, I'm rocking with them. If you don't like them, so what, man? I mean, more than anything, I want it to be a good game. Right. Bring that, bring that, bring that same thing in. Write it down and bring it back in. Oh, well, well, we, like, what, what, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We better talk about it right now, man. It's NFL playoffs have started immediately. You know what? I forgot, man. We got a sponsor for this segment. This segment is brought to you. This segment of the end of is brought to you by all 27 of Deacon Dale Cavs and four his 7 eleven. Because Deacon Haji Dale, once you snack with Deacon Dale, you you snack with no other like that. There it is, man. Deacon Dale is the. This segment is brought to you by the one and only Haji. Haji, this segment is brought to you by Haji. Yeah, Smith from Bama. I can't. I don't know why I want to call him Jones. This the, the, so this this segment is the Deacon Dale saying we gonna go basketball. Last night, man. The other night, you know, you are a big time LeBron James fan. I'm a supporter. I like him. Big ups to LeBron. Big ups to, to the Kang. But uh, uh, this uh, 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 a couple of nights ago, you remember at the beginning of the season or at, at the end of last season, uh, uh, Kyrie, the crybaby Irvin, Irvin, said, this is the first time I ever had somebody on the end of the bench look down there and know they could hit the big shot. So, they come up, he he pop, 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 he do his thing, he pull up, almost crack the backboard, they tip it out, Robert Ory style, my man KD, shoot the pat and fade away that you just knew was going on, going in, they missed it, don't do it as a Le- 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 LeBron revenge statement, what are your thoughts on that play, and how should pe- people, should the media ate his ass up? Alright. Uh, but you know, in regards to that though, um, it, it, it is it's 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 very ironic. It's the irony in the situation. Um as regards to it, you guys are supposed to be the biggest quote. Um, you know, Kyrie. You know, as Skip Bayless always say, he hits a shot of shots that you know Game LeBron gets you know championship in in or in Oakland Warriors in Oracle. Okay. You know, Kevin Durant gets a shot of shots in LeBron and LeBron's out. You know, it, it, you know, so, I mean, did you choke? Is this what we consider choke? Because, I mean, I bet you if you try to say, oh, actually, that might be the same shot that Kyrie Irving took. And he hit it. It worked. 
That is. I'm listening. And we all we always say it's one thing to do for your mouth. But it's another thing to step into shit and sit your foot in your mouth. And that's exactly what happened. Because you said, because pretty much came out of your mouth, Kyrie saying, hey, if I don't hit the shot, I know I know this man can. So just as God gave you the plan, you had a chance to hit it, you missed. The person you thought they could hit the shot, that you knew could hit the shot, had a chance and missed. It's like egg on your face. So do I feel bad about it? No. Not laugh about it for hours. <laughs> for hours. Because it was more so like a uh uh taste the soup. Taste the soup. Where's the spoon? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know what, man, and that's the sad part about the situation because old school media will be killing Kyrie. But see, these guys, again, that's that's the beauty of print media. That's why print media will always be better than what we have right now. Because the dudes in print media, they didn't care. Because they were going to talk about it. And if they had any stones, they would still talk about it. Because whether uh, I'm in the search for new favorite player in the league right now, whether you the dude on ESPN or you the dude at the USA Today, you are supposed to speak your mind. And uh, I just I laugh at it now, like oh yeah. So, uh, uh. but see, me and you had dozens of conversations about karma, and we talked about clapping back. Remember, we talked about clapping back. And in the event that you find yourself in a situation and you you can clap back, sometimes it's best to just sit on your hands and do nothing about it. Because right now, Kyrie is looking like a super jackass. And, you know, I listen, because I like right. Shannon, I listened to the show today. And I was like, yo, Skip, what's up? And it was like, nah, it's nothing. It's nothing, bro. I mean, nothing's up. Because. He shut him down. It was so funny because he asked me, like, hey, so. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. It's and and this is why you don't throw rocks living in a glass house. Skip Bayless for the last seventeen years have been saying LeBron ain't this and LeBron ain't that and LeBron, 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 and now the guys who you said were better than him, they he they didn't come through. And I appreciate the I'm fact that, yeah, and I appreciate the fact that Shannon came at it like a man, because he had every right to curb stump skip, and he did, and I loved it. And this is why, that's like, like that's why I mean, me and you be talking. I'm like, nah, man, don't, 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 don't go into it. Don't go in hard with that, because if you go in hard, when it's your turn to get kicked. People going to kick you extra hard. And it ain't worth it. It's not worth it. But it felt good. I'm not going to lie. It felt good. Yeah, yeah. But it felt good to see Skip Bayless squirming in that seat. And, and it just it just further proves that... Uh, it just further proves that uh, uh, Skip Bayless is the fraud. That's why number one chief rocker. Ben from BS3, uh, who else does sports shows? Jelani, us, but Big Illinois, uh, uh, any uh, uh, Trey and Maestro, Fish, yeah, Mike Way. That's why we are better than them. That's why we were all. As long as we keep the mentality that we have, we will always be better than them. We will die better than them. 
And I'm not saying that because these the homies and man, I want them to support me, man. I got you. But no, because we tell the unabashed truth with no problem because at some point we will have hundreds of thousands of people listening to us and we don't need y'all. We don't need y'all to uh, rock with us on that level. We don't need it because the people will support us. And they, ESPN and Fox and, and, and uh, what is it? Uh, uh, ESPN, Fox, Bleacher Report, they've lost sight of that, I believe. Because they want, they, they are looking at the concept of, hey, if they, if the people, if the athletes stop coming on our show, the people will stop looking. But if you tell the truth, the people will listen. But they are never, they will never switch over to that ideology. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried. But hey, that's why I say Ben, Way, Rocker, uh, Jelani, uh, Barbershop Crew, Vince Wright, Sports Don Wright, Sports Governor of uh, 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 Minnesota. That's why we must continue to live in our yeah, truth. That is a, that is a force, yeah, yeah. Because we have the advantage. Because we are building our organizations from a grassroots position, and it's over. But once we do this, it's a, we don't have to, oh, well, well, if this guy don't come on. Right. Don't it's, come it's, on, it's, chump. It's, it's genuine. It's more so us, us, more so we use it. Okay, we use stats, but we also use our platforms to get the message out. So it's like, we have to be very careful with that because it's going to be important. Then the eye test is going to say, hold on. My man scored 30 points in the first half, ended up with 34 at the end of the game. What happened in the second half? Thank you. And like, that's what people don't do half, anymore. And, 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 and five to go, you should have had 60. You should have had 80. Why are you only number 40? Yeah, and that's the part that's missing. And, you know, just, hey, man, it's okay to, you should feel as a player, it's okay to be criticized. Like what Philip Rivers is doing. Like Philip Rivers is doing. He he just reading the paper now. And he don't get mad. But hey man, who cares if you get mad? Stop stinking. That's the key. Stop stinking. Now, uh Hey, my man the greatest said he wants the game to be on. Hey, hey, my man the greatest said Alabama three or I don't say zero. Damn that. <laughs> you, you alone in that one. You're along with hell. I, I don't want to see no three nothing game. Fuck that. None of that. He can get he can get that dream up. I don't want to see no blowouts. I don't want to see no 17 24 game. I want to see a 33 27 or something like that. I don't I don't, I don't see no blowouts. Fuck that. Fuck that. I don't see that. I, don't, I told you I wanted to be a hail mary. A couple of flips around. They run out the end zone with it going the other way. Fumble at the 50 running back. I want to see that. That's how I want the game. <laughs> just keep running, and just chaotic, like 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 that Cal Berkeley Stanford game, John Elway senior year, when the band on the field. <laughs> I want to see that. I don't want to see no low scoring game. The NBA season is still young, still got milk behind the ears. It's brand new. Uh, your boy KD tested with the uh, boo boo flu, tested positive with the boo boo flu, so he out for a couple weeks. What has shocked you? What has disappointed you? What are you looking forward to? Oh, oh! What has shocked me is that, in fact, um, that I can be the first to say I was wrong. Um, quite a few ways. Um, in regards to the predictions we made when we first started talking about the um, I like the Hawks. I know I gave some leeway, but. They actually might have something coming together. That young core, they are coming together. Um, I, I, I gave Orlando a slight. Sorry, Orlando. Y'all kill it. Um, as far as it goes, Aaron Gordon, he's kind of getting into the mold, but I think you need to listen to me. Like I told Steph Curry, take the braids out your head, you might get back right. Um, um, Dirty. It's wrong. You're horrible um, for that. The way that, the way that Ben Simmons. I, You're I horrible know, for that. I just I want you to know that. But it, it worked. It worked for Steph Curry because I believe Steph Curry heard me. So Gary Gordon, it's your turn. My G. Um, but 
as far as it goes, uh, Philly, Philly's been doing their thing. I am Iron Man. Even, hey, shout out to Team Brock and his mix. They are actually playing very formidable basketball right now. Um, that rookie, who is it? Obi, Copeland, Copeland, I think that's his name. Obi, um, one uh, Kenobi. Oh, oh, more Kenobi. There we go. He's doing his thing. Um, so as far as it goes in the East, they they count. I mean, the East, I, I'm loving the East. Um, as far as it goes, you know, I'm still not loving the whole Westbrook in the Washington trying to deal with Bradley Beal. So that's a little weird. Um, as far as the West goes, I mean, Kawhi's back after he got busted in the mouth. You know, saw what Paul George did by himself. They come together. I, I try to you know, set up my man Luca. He's trying to come together and everything. Everybody, so the Kings are doing his thing. CP3 is, is helping out Devin Booker down there and eight. Hey, so it's hey, like, uh, hey, even yep. though he's still young, this season is amazing. Hey man, I didn't ask you for no NBA league preview. I asked you who you like. Hey. Who you, who you surprised you? Who disappointed? I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Oh, now you want to show out. Now you want to show out. This big Julio Iglesias calling. This is Standard Bench Podcast. Who do I have on the phone? Talk to me. Hey, man, this is uh, Julio Iglesias 73, man. I ain't got... My head, my head ain't cold, man. I can't get on camera, man. <laughs> hey, man, we ain't trying to date you. We ain't trying to date you, son. What's going on, bro? Chillin', man. Late for work again, huh? Chillin', man. How you doing, brother? Hey, you know you on, you on camera now. We got, we got, we, we got video now, so you late. Ain't no unemployment in 2021. Um, it's illegal, it? man. I, 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 no comment. <laughs> you ain't been come on here with no felonious, felonious uh, conversation, man. We're not doing nothing nefarious on the end of the bench on uh, 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 Bill for this network, man. Stop with your illegal activity, man. Knock it off, buddy. Talk to me, man. Well, what you like? What, 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 what surprised you? What are you looking forward to in this National Basketball Association season? Hey, man. I, I, um, well, I want to talk about my Spurs, but they 4-2. And really? last place in 4-2, which is crazy. You want to talk about broccoli, huh? Man, it's, it's actually... It's okay. We had a few blowouts the first, like, week, man. But it's, it's, it's actually becoming interesting, man. No. I want to see what um really? what team can can contest the Lakers, man. All right, what don't you like, and what you looking forward to? Um, uh, actually, I'm looking forward to to the, to the, to the young cats from the Spurs, man. Um, continue to play well without uh the market. Hopefully, we can fix somebody into taking that contract. Well, um. Maybe a bag of bag of tennis balls in a washing machine or something. But uh, I'm looking forward to the Spurs, man. I don't think we're gonna make the playoffs, but um, wow, should be competitive. Man. Hey, man, the Spurs are two and four. You said they were four and two. Oh, they two and four. I thought they were four and two. I'm sorry, man. Mm-hmm. You sure, man? Yeah. Sorry, I'm sure. Yeah, they, yeah they're the bottom. They're in the bottom of the map. Hey, man, I don't believe that. Like, like Keith Rocker wouldn't believe the, the Giants going to the playoffs. Man. I don't believe that. <laughs> well, big Midlothian, it's not happening. Wow. Well, with me, man, what I like, what I like is the Connects. The Connects. Uh, one game above 500. I know it's only seven games into the season, but I can always tell y'all, basketball is best when New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and one of those teams in Texas is doing well. When those places are killing, the NBA is better because it covers the entire map and it makes it more, it makes it more uh, uh, palatable. It makes it, what I don't like is the fact that the NBA still ain't got on to the position of Showing everybody on TV. 
there's a lot of games that are on TV that shouldn't be on TV. You know, it's like, what, what, what's going on? What, what are you doing? And what I'm looking forward to is me. You know what, man? What I'm looking forward to is watching them damn new Brooklyn Nets crash and burn. I am looking forward to watching the New Jersey I mean, or the Brooklyn Nets crash and burn because whereas Kyrie Irving and and uh, uh, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are two of the most talented ball players in the National Basketball Association we have today, they did a whole lot of woofing and talking, and they have they are too stupid to get off that bandwagon of hate LeBron. I've never seen that. Now, a lot of people didn't like my all-time favorite player, Isaiah Thomas. But you didn't find that out until after he left. Or at the end of his career. You find those things out now that people didn't like Isaiah Thomas. These dudes are sitting around in front of mainstream media talking about they don't like this guy. Something I just don't like. I don't like it. And uh, I ain't trying to hear it no more, man. I am not trying to hear it. And I'm glad that they are not doing as well as they could be doing. I understand that at some point in the near future, they will get it together. They will work it out. I understand. But at the end of the day, I don't like those two guys personally. Can you criticize their ability to play basketball? No, you cannot do that. But I just don't like them because they play into this situation. Us against the media, then they want to get all Carl Thomas emotional and mad. They do a lot of talking, but they don't want to do a lot of hearing. If you dissing people, you got. I'm one of the. I got one of the biggest miles on the internet at this point. One of the biggest miles in Chicago or Illinois. And if you criticize me, I just got to throw up the throw up the uh, forearms and block and keep it moving. So that's what I'm not liking. But I am liking the fact that the Phoenix Suns is doing that thing. Yeah. I, I'm like I'm like you, Joe. I'm like the fact that the Suns are doing that thing, and you know what? You know what annoys me more than anything, and it may I want y'all opinion on this. Why ain't nobody talking about this bang up job that Doc Rivers is doing? The Sixers only lost one game, and I told I told that was my prediction. I told y'all watch out for them Sixers. And, and you know who the and ain't nobody talking about Doc. Another surprise is the Orlando Magic. They out there hooping. This is starting. I want y'all thoughts on this. And if anybody want to join in in the chat room, y'all welcome to talk to. Uh, I want y'all thoughts on this. Uh, what? Are you, uh, I'm starting to think the NBA is taking a turn towards the NBA. That I, not in regards to style of play. But in regards, in regards to level of competition, this is starting to look like the 80s and 90s again. Because when you look at this, Philadelphia dominate, Orlando killing, the Pacers looking good, the Celtics are going to be good, the Knicks, they might be around 500 all year, but hell, if 500 in the East can get you in the playoffs, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers will eventually crash and burn all to be damned. I'm not expecting anything out of them. The Bucks gonna take off. The Miami Heat gonna take off. The uh, the Hawks they might level out. The Bulls are the Bulls have they they they, have, they woke. And the rest of them teams I ain't really looking for a lot. I think the Raptors are gonna wake up too at some point. Then when you go out west, uh, Denver gonna wake up. Houston is gonna wake up. Hopefully Sacramento and Dallas level off. Portland gonna wake up. It looks like the Warriors are woke. I don't know about the uh, uh, New Orleans Pelicans. The Jazz is gonna be there. The Lakers gonna be there. The Phoenix Suns they gonna fall. They gonna fall off round to the AFC. And the Clippers gonna be there. The NBA is looking wild, mad. It looking mad competitive. Talk to me about that, brother. Well, well, don't forget, this is the first year where they having a play game. So like that, that you not set into the playoffs because seventeen through ten have like a play in series. So like you might you might be like you say you might be eight to be you might be playing a nineteen to make sure you get in. 
So as far as it goes, you might have to step your game up and get into them top six seeds to make sure you ain't got to play back in. So that's more so competitive. But as far as it goes, this is going to be, like you said, a lot of teams are going to fizzle out. You know, the ones that start off hot, hopefully the ones that we're actually looking forward to seeing, they stay hot. And the ones that got to a slow start, hopefully that finally starts to level out when all the other teams that got off high starts to slow down. So as far as it goes, the NBA does level itself out. You know, everything plays itself out. We've seen that a couple of years ago when the season started earlier or later than it was supposed to. We've all always saw that. First month and a half, you know, everybody is either gung ho, killing, or just not doing anything. But as far as it goes, we should be really good. It's going to be a good season. Yeah, it's looking like that, man. It's looking real good. Chief Rocker is impressed by the rookie. I'm back. I'm back, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, Joe. I'm back. I don't know what happened. I'm back. I'm back. No, no. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the things that you were saying is exactly how I feel. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know what the hell happened. Sorry for the interrupt. That brief interruption, uh, guys. We still on, and then the good thing is. The uh, Spreaker is still on, so we didn't lose anyway. Hopefully, we ain't lose anything. Let me go to the Spreaker app. Oh, yeah, we ain't lose anything, man. Only thing we lost was Big Illinois, uh, and he calling back right now. I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. As you were stating, before we, we got rudely interrupted. What's good? What's good? My man said T-150 for the Fab Five is in the building. Uh, like you said, man, um, uh, 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 it's looking like the National Basketball Association is definitely back. We're going to be in for a treat. Uh, 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 so it's on, man. I'm definitely looking forward to this NBA season. I'm impressed with it. And I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully this can hold up. I hope they don't reduce the season. It's not good to me at all. Period. Big Illinois, what's good, man? Talk to me. It's, I mean, but as far as it goes, it's, it's just... I mean, I agree with y'all, man. As far as the NBA season has been much better than I thought it was going to be. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, 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 apologize for that brief interruption. I made a mistake and hit the wrong button. I realized what I did. Uh, the good thing is, the wrong button... Didn't stop anything. Everything kept going. and went blank for a second. I apologize. Uh, I got to apologize to our sponsor. Our number one sponsor, Deacon Dale Cabs. Shout out to Deacon Dale Cabs, where you can get a cab and go from coast to coast. Or you And on your way from coast to coast, you can stop at any one of his 7-Elevens in 44 states. <laughs> That's our number one sponsor. On oh, uh, uh, built for this network. That's built for this network. Biggest sponsor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Y'all didn't know. Y'all didn't know Dick and Dale was a sponsor of the show. Oh man, it is what it is, man. Dick and Dale, man. Yeah, man. You know, you know, Dick and Dale, man. You gotta love him. But let's go ahead and get this thing started with um uh, let's get the thing started with the National Football League talk. National Football League is in full effect. Uh the playoffs have started, people are getting fired. Let's talk about White Monday and uh a bunch of people losing their jobs. There are five National Football League jobs that are wide open. Uh let me pull a list up of the Peppers. Who are unemployed. We are looking at the Detroit Lions. 
who I wish burn in hell. It has nothing to do with more my connection to Chicago. It's the way they play Jim Caldwell. That's why they need to be fired. The New York Jets have fired their head coach for the first time in the history of the universe. The AFC North are keeping all their coaches. <laughs> uh, you got uh, the, te- the the Houston Texans, the Jackson J- Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, and the Los Angeles Chargers have also fired their coach. And I already, in the aforementioned Detroit Lions, which I want to burn in hell for the way they played the homie Jim Caldwell. Talk to me. Who? Where is the job that you think is the is the best? If you were up for a head coaching position, where would you go first? Hey, I'm before you say something. I just want to say something if y'all know the topic. You know how they was. Coming across the screen, um, Gus was fired. Um, I forget who else was fired. I mean, uh, with uh, they parted ways with uh, the Jacksonville coach Gus Maron. Uh, they they parted ways with these other coaches, but they fired somebody <laughs> from San Diego. Yeah, Anthony Lynn. Uh, if it's a god in the sky. And Jesus is listening to the end of the bench podcast. I, I seen him in the chat room. I know he listened. Uh, what's up, Jesus? Uh, uh, if John Gruden got anything that resembles what they call a brain, I hope like hell that uh, the Raiders hire Anthony Lynn and then they could beat the Bass in the playoffs and piss off number one Chief Rock and Jersey Burn. Shout out to H Rap pissing off his main man, number one Chief Rock and Jersey Burn. Big Illinois. You know what, man? Um, that that Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they got the number one pick. Plus, they got over a hundred some million dollars in the salary cap space. And and the pick. That's, that's attractive, man. And they got four of the first fifty picks. And they have four of the first fifty picks. Yeah, so they that they um that's gonna be a few uh, 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 coach that wanna be put your hand in like if that's the type of situation that if I'm a John Gruden type that I'd wanna go into. I wish he would. I think you're right. You John Gruden should wanna go there. You got an owner who who don't be all up in your business. <laughs> Uh, I must agree with Big Illinois even if I didn't agree with what he was saying I agree but I have to extra agree with him because I think uh, John Gruden should go to the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars I agree with you Big Illinois I agree if John Gruden should go there John Gruden should go there get him out of Oakland and keep him out of Chicago I mean, get him out of Vegas and keep him out of Chicago. Big Illinois, do what he's saying. (laughs) Keep him out of Chicago and get him out of Vegas. And and, and yes, John Gruden, do you hear that? Do you hear that, John Gruden? It ain't about the money. Don't make it about the money, John Gruden. Ain't no state tax, ain't no uh, 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 income tax in the state of Florida. 
Jacksonville is in Florida. Used to live in Florida. It ain't even far away from Tampa. Hey man, off topic, man. I just looked up at I just looked up at the TV screen, and, and, and this is bogus, man. I'm super bogus for this. But uh, Trevor Lawrence's father, Jeremy Lawrence, looked like Bonnie, the drunk dude off the Simpsons, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He looked like Bonnie, the drunk dude. I'm like, damn, they got a live Bonnie. <laughs> I'm like, they got a live Barney. <laughs> they got Barney live. <laughs> like, man, the technology is something else. They didn't make Barney. Like, that dude look like, he looked like he finna go, off that armor. But, uh, <laughs> that was bogus as hell. I, I know that's wrong, but it's funny. It's, it's still funny. Uh, the most desirable job, for real, for real, it depends on the mentality of the coach. Because, believe it or not, man, that Jets job ain't that bad if you that type of coach. Because I'm not saying Sam Donald is good. I'm not saying that he's good. But if you are that Andy Reid type of coach, think about it like this. The Jets, even though he he, he, uh, he a low-key bigot, and then nobody want to talk about it. Oh, nobody want to talk about them being a bigot. But, uh... Even though I think he a low key bigot, you know what I'm saying? He suspected white supremacists because he wrote it with uh, the Donald. But they don't have no problem spending no money up there in the Jets. And if you got to, if you are the Andy Reid mold, the quarterback guy, that ain't a bad job. That's not the most desirable, but that technically is not a bad job because look at look look at it like this: when they had the tuna, he turned it around in a year. You see what I'm saying? So if you got, they don't, they don't mind spending money. They obviously draft well because they, every year they draft in a good player and send them a place to win. <laughs> they always draft in good ball players. They just don't have nobody at the top to control it. So that Jets job ain't that bad, and it goes back to like we said as a quarterback for uh uh uh, uh as a quarterback when we was talking about last week, would you want to go to the Jets? Hell yeah. Because if you fool around and win in New York, you a god. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that's the most desirable, but people not paying attention to the Jets. Oh, yeah, we ain't even talking about the Falcons either. Uh, I would go, the most desirable is clearly to me San Diego because uh, 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 Los Angeles. Because they're, clear, they're ready to win right now. The Chargers are ready to Nah, I ain't doing no push-ups. We do push-ups already. That's all for today. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I think I think that's the most... The, the Chargers, Jacksonville, and believe it or not, the Falcons. Because you just have to reconfigure that roster and make them desirable. This isn't like Dan Quinn. This isn't like Dan Quinn. Because overall, we just need to Gave up so much, like in regards to dude, you know, run the ball, take your time off the clock. So, any decision he made, that's what we're gonna like about. You know, as they were giving up all these big leads, we always blame it on Dan Quinn. Once they gave, once Dan Quinn was gone, they actually won a few games. So, okay, Falcons could be in there. Falcons could be in there. Yeah, man. That's the. I'm looking at that. They got talent down there. They got uh, uh, Julio. They got Calvin Ridley or Ridley or whatever his name is, or other wide receiver. And, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think that's, uh, 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 I think that's a desirable place to go. I think that's a desirable place to go because, uh, uh talent. They got talent. I know, like I said, I am I am perpetually a, a Detroit Lions hater. Until they get rid of the damn ownership group, I will always hate the Detroit Lions. And it has nothing to do with the Bass. You know, I root against the Lions. I'm a bad because uh, uh, I uh, 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 because uh, uh, 
I'm from Chicago, but now I hate it. I hate, you know how most Bear fans hate the Packers? That's how I hate the Lions, because they played Jim Caldwell. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Let's talk about the matchups, man. Uh, That's almost personal. It is, because, uh, dude, you fired this man for what? Look, look at it this way. And he suck as a television personality, so he damn sure suck as a quarterback. Whole different story for a different day. But like they, they fired him in Indianapolis, and then of course, matter of fact, it might have been after the year they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the. Um, to Two the years fight. later, he was fired. It might have been that year they fired, him. but it's boom. And then so I got like eight one, and then when he went to Detroit, it's not what happened there. So like. You had a way better winning percentage in that Patricia Lee stayed for three years. So And um, I can even though I agree totally with you, I'm not gonna ever take up for those bums and uh 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 I'm not gonna take for those bums in uh uh Indianapolis, never ever. But at least they can say, Well, he had a bad year, we just gonna start from scratch. Right? Right. But I'm just saying, that's the lot. They could. No, 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 Joe, Joe. No, no, we right here. But what I'm saying is, at least they got a bullshit lot. They got a flat out BS lot that they can tell. Well, he had a bad year. Jim Carwell never finished under 500. So, I, I, I ain't rocking it. I, I ain't rocking with them, man. Big Illinois. No, no, I was asking Big Illinois. Is he still there? Hey man, stop stop using the reefer, man. That's why you ain't get on. That's why you ain't reused the camera. You smoke weed, man. I said you smoke weed. That's why you ain't want to get on camera. We know what's the act. We know what you're doing. Hey man, I, I mean, I, I, I ain't smoking weed in like three years. Allegedly. Uh, no, no, we were just talking. Uh, we're going to get to this Super Wild Card weekend. Buffalo Bills versus the Joe from Houston's, a.k.a. the Indianapolis Colts. Talk to me. You go first, Big, uh, big Illinois. Hey, man, I'm rolling with the Colts. Uh, I'm rolling with the Colts. No need to ask Joe from uh, Houston. Uh, I'm going with the uh, – I'm going to go with the Colts, too. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to take over that game. I think they have enough defense to put pressure on Josh Allen. Josh Allen still is not the quarterback he needs to be in regards to uh, taking over a playoff game. That's so, why I picked the uh, coach. I, yeah. I went with the better defense. Right. Because I have zero faith in uh, Bill Murray. Hey, y'all just gave me way more faith than I had in Next up is the Rams versus the Seahawks. The, I, this at one point this would have been the premier playoff game, but it's damn near the who give a damn game. Talk to me, Joe. Yeah, I'm going with the Rams. Uh, I think the Seahawks are going to win this game. Uh, I think the Rams are going to win this game. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going with the Seahawks only, uh, well, mainly because of, you know, Jared Rob being out. Uh, that might be today I, advantage. I mean, that's, that's also mainly. Touche. Uh, <laughs> but in regards to, I mean, I, I, I just have to feel right about the Rams in regards to the end of the defense and doing what they both do, but the offense wasn't thinking like they were supposed to. So I do believe. Dangerous, should just getting get going. They have home. It's just fine for the team. Big Illinois. You know what? Um, is Jamal Adams playing? I know he hurt his shoulder or something, but but they ain't got no quarterback for the Rams. So give me the team. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Rams too. Uh, uh, my man RC said Seahawks by ten, Buffalo by seven. But uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, Ram. I'm gonna go with the uh, Seahawks because no Jared Goff. Cam need to be trying to pack up and move that way because uh, I think Jared. Go- I think that their coach could fix Cam. And we saw the last game of the season. Bill Belichick had to- it. Looks to me, it gave me the impression that Bill Belichick had the cuffs on Cam because when it when, it, when when nothing was on the line, he let it fly and Cam looked like Cam again. So uh, uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Cam with that. Chief Rock said, uh, "Don't double, uh, don't double too much, Joe. They will let me in." <laughs> uh, man, yeah, you got different type of faith. See, you see, the only thing, the only thing, my sister, she tried to be jump on the bandwagon. I drive the bandwagon. It's the difference. Too and another French word. <laughs> okay, uh, the Washington racial slurs versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm, uh, Washington by three. I think this is actually gonna be a good game. Um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Tampa Bay though. Um. C says Tampa by 14. <laughs> then Mike Evans injury is kind of, that's a tough one. Uh, me personally, I'm going to go for the upset. I'm going to go with the racial slurs because they have the ingredients to win. Anytime you can put that smoke on Tom Brady. Look, their quarterback is just as sucky as the Bears. And their defensive line is twice as good. You put that heat on Tom Brady, he getting about the kitchen. Uh, I don't think it's going to be. I think it, it put like this. Either, either the racial, slur, racial slurs will blow them out or they going to blow the racial slur. I mean, either the racial slurs going to win or they going to blow them out. I don't think it's going to be a tight game unless the racial slurs win. Alex Smith will not finish the game. Look for A.B., to torch that defense. And everybody talking this. That's that's from the homie RC. Uh, everybody's talking this stuff about uh, uh, you don't want to sh- uh, 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 pull on Superman cape, so to speak, and all this and all that. Uh, dude ain't Superman no more. Yeah, don't poke the bear. Buddy ain't Superman no more. And the last time he faced the defense that was... Hun- that, that was gunning at his ass this hard. One of y'all gonna have to turn y'all phone value down with the show plan. Uh, 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 um, uh, whoever is, uh, 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 every time, every time throughout his career, early in his career, when the Pittsburgh still with Joy Porter and, and, and Harrison was smoking his ass, he couldn't hang. When Ray Lewis you know, used to smoke on, put that smoke on his ass, he couldn't hang. When Dwight Freeney them was putting that smoke on his ass, he couldn't hang. When the Denver Bronco them was putting that smoke on his ass, he couldn't hang. 
when uh uh if even when the uh, Legion of Doom in the regular season put that smoke on his ass, he couldn't hang. When you put that smoke on him at any point in his career, he cannot hang. He's a flincher. I've been saying that I'm a Tom Brady guy, but uh uh he's a flincher. RC says he just don't trust Alex Smith. I trust Chase out of Ohio State. Chase Young, them. I trust him. Hey man, he beat him. No, nah, he beat him, man. No, nah, you sound like Skip Bayless now, man. He beat him. He beat him. Because if hey, if that's the case, Eli didn't beat him. Okay, you're right. Yeah, you win, you win. Uh, RC seems to believe that they'll play a two tight end case, uh, two tight end set to double chase uh, Young. I I just think I I think that defensive line they have too much defensive line credibility to uh uh uh. I just don't I don't have no faith in Tom Brady anymore. And I think the playoffs is going to expose that. I think they're going to put that smoke on him and that's going to be his ass because I mean Tom Brady used to be a great quarterback. He used to be an awesome quarterback. He's a very good quarterback. And when you go from great to very good, and they put that smoke on you at your height, and you couldn't take it, I don't think you're going to be able to take it now. With that being said, uh, right fresh from the uh, uh, Deacon Dale 7-Eleven in the middle of Baltimore, Maryland, the Baltimore Ravens against the Tennessee Titans. The, the, hey, this is the used-to-be bowl. The used-to-be the Browns versus the used-to-be the Oilers. Who y'all got? Uh, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I got Baltimore. This is probably going to be the first good playoff game. Joe? You were talking. Okay. Um, this is going to be one of the best games of the it's going to be one of the best games of the, of the weekend to my, in my eyes because it's going to be all running, 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 running. Um, I do feel that Baltimore is going to take over because once they start to, like, once the running game slows down on the Boston Tennessee side, I don't believe in Ryan Tannehill. I don't believe he's going to be able to make the form of the throw that he's going to throw. So I believe in Lamar Jackson a little bit more, so I'm going to roll with Baltimore Ravens. I'm going with the Ravens as well because uh, – I think the Ravens are designed to stop that. That run, 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 run stuff. And when you design to beat that run, 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 run stuff, uh, the way they talk about Lamar is who Ryan Tannehill is. This is why I laugh at people when they tell me that uh, uh, the running game is not paramount anymore because without Taylor and without one man who got hurt who got hurt for Taylor go down, I think Bill Murray would have been looking just like he was looking last year at uh with the Chargers. I think if as long as uh Harbaugh don't get cute, they'll win this game walking away. Because they're gonna load up, make Tannehill throw to him, and and, and the Colts are gonna shut that foolishness all the way down. All the way fucking down. And oh uh King of the cock jockeys in the uh, 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 chat room, Kirby, talking this Tom Brady shit. He, you ain't heard him all year, and now he's sure talking that Tom Brady shit. That's another reason. I damn near want Tom Brady to get hurt. Because guess what? This dude used to sit in the barbershop every week and tell me Tom Brady was a system quarterback. Now he Tom Brady. He got Tom Brady pump palms. Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit, man. Chicago Bears versus New Orleans Saints. I'm going to go first on this one. 
I don't think the snow or Bass got a snowball chance if Fish Grease to beat these dudes. Their offense is putrid. Uh, uh, Trubisky's a bum. Their defense, their defensive calls are shaky at, at best. And Alvin Kamara's back from uh, uh, um, COVID. I don't think they got a chance. I agree with you. One thousand and one percent. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I don't think this ever gonna be anything. Uh, as far as it goes, unless something drastic happens in the first couple of series, where nothing else can work for the for the Saints, that's the only way the Bears will win. But I, yeah, I think it's gonna be draws continue. Oh, by the way, RC said Tennessee by seven. Man, bear down, bear down, bear's about three, man. Okay. And this is why the Bears ain't won a fucking uh. I'm 50 years old. And this is why the Bears ain't won Super Bowl since I was in high school. Because don't nobody, everybody got hope. Did he say the Bears only won score three? Nah, man. What he said? Say it again, big or not? Bear down. Chicago Bears, Bears back three, man. What makes y'all think that that um, um, New Orleans Saints offense don't kill them like that? Man? Because it's not the Saints offense gonna kill that defense. When you when you got ten million three and outs, that's what happens. When you three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. At some point, your defense gets tired. Who did, who did they play the last four or five weeks? Regardless. So. Going out, they didn't go out four or five. Uh, they wasn't going three and out against the Packers. And the Packers defense is good since when? All right, man. The Bears by three, my brother. No, I'm just saying. Man, I bet y'all, I bet y'all a six-pack of old style piece, man. Yeah, you better do something light. You better not put no money behind it. All right, man. I, 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 I mean, you see gentlemen's back, man. All right, cool. Whatever. A bottle, a bottle or whatever y'all drinking. Yo, right. I ship it down there to you, man. Yeah, All right. All right. We'll see. Right. Be cool. Because I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm being honest. 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 i am being Feeling that they gonna beat the Saints this weekend. Okay, I ain't mad at you, brother. I ain't mad at you, but I just, I just, I have zero faith in Mitch Trubisky. I have zero faith in uh, uh, I have zero faith in this. This whole coaching staff, the play calling, I just, hey. I want them. I want the Bears to be better. But I think the Bears, uh, I don't think the Bears, I think people in Chicago are, as a matter of fact, it's not just the Bear thing. I think the sports fans in Chicago are good, too good for the ownership groups that are in Chicago. If the Chicago sports team's ownership group invested half of what Chicagoans invest in the Bears, the Bulls, the the, the 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 Hawks, the White Sox and the Cubs, those teams will contend every year. But they know people are gonna keep having hope. I was talking to this dude the other day, he was telling me about how uh in, in your lifetime you can't think of another city that got championships like Chicago. I was like, LA, my friend. And I'm like, New York? <laughs> so I'm mean like, I'm like, uh. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding? But. You need to keep going? Right. <laughs> I was like, what you think, I'm 11? <laughs> right, right. I was just like, what? But still, man, we didn't, man. Nobody could contend with the Bulls. I was like, did you not see the Lakers win six in the last 20 years? The Lakers have won six titles 
since Jordan retired. <laughs> I was like, I was, but it's just like, I, I, you know, the, and it ain't a knock against Bear fan. I want the Bears to be good. I just. The question I have for everybody who's a bear fan, uh, 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 people I have for questions for bear fans is, do the Bears ownership want them to win? <laughs> That's the question I have. Do the Bears ownership? That's why I'm a bear fan by default. Because I'm a, I'm a lover of my city. That's it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a bad fan. Devonda Smith is the 2020 Heisman Trophy winner. Big ups to that young brother, wide receiver, do everything player out of Alabama. Big ups. I mean, I, 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 ain't, I don't have no hate for the Bears, but it's just like, it's hard being a Chicago sports fan. Shout out to Lauren for making it in. It's all good. You chose to be here. And for those who haven't done it already, please subscribe to the channel. Please go to Bill for This Network Radio. Subscribe to the channel. Hit like. And uh, because Chief Rock is going to be doing his shows from there as well. Uh... We are uh, we expanding. We we can continue to grow, and uh, we're gonna continue to make this thing work for us, man. I mean, it's fun. It's it's paying off. The hard work's paying off, and now we kicking ass. We got the Mandelions versus the Mike Tomlins. For those who don't know who Mandelion is, it is my main man Mandelion from New Match Radio. He's a Cleveland, he's he's from Ohio. He's a big time Cleveland Brown fan. Which I give him all the respect for that. And I may sound like a hypocrite saying I respect him for being a, a Brown fan. But what I can say, and re, well, the reason I can respect Mandelion for being a Browns fan is because the Browns do it wrong. I think Chicago sports teams do it cheap. They ain't, they ain't not throwing money out there. I think the bear, Chicago sports teams do not want to spend money. The Browns spend money wrong. I can deal with a dummy versus a miser. That's what I'm saying. I think the Bears are misers. I think the ownership groups are the uh, 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 the ownership groups are the Browns over the last year. They are overzealous, like the dude in in, in D.C. He always want to have his hand on everything and blowing Daniel, Daniel Snyder. This dude is keep meddling and pit, lit, picking and this let, don't let people do their jobs, and they keep getting it wrong. Mike Brown in uh, Cincinnati. Dudes in Chicago, they don't want. They know I'm gonna get a 250 million dollar check in uh, April, and I'm gonna get another one in October. Right. What am I doing? Uh, and then I'm gonna get concessions and all that. And just like the re- and, and, and and what solidified this for me when they did that renovation in Soldier Field where they played the, where the Bears play, this was solidified that at the time. Michael McCaskey, George Hallis' grandson, was running the team. And he was like, if y'all don't give me the money, I'm going to leave. Al Davis said, I'll come. And he was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Al Davis said, are you leaving Chicago? I dare you. They'll be the Chicago Raiders before Monday. And, and it's Sunday at noon. <laughs> so, and then he calmed down. So, it just, hey, man, I ain't trying to hear it, man. I'm not trying to hear. And uh, well, anyway, you got the Cleveland Browns versus the uh, 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 Pittsburgh Steelers. Who y'all got? Either one of y'all can take the floor. Uh, I'll take the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, granted, you know, they always say um, they, they, they split the season series in regards to what's going on. But we know what happened in week 17 or so where the rest of the starters, you know, pretty much – Pretty much, the Browns are playing for their life. You know, it just so happened to win. I don't think that's going to happen this time. Uh, I do hope the running game, because, you know, I'm a fan of Nick Chubb, Nate, and a fan of Kareem Hunt. Hopefully, they get the running game going. But as far as it goes, I do think Big Ben with the new arm should be able to get this rolling and at least get them out of this run. Illinois? 
Yeah, my, my moral with the Steelers, man. Um, they almost beat them with uh, Mason Rudolph. Uh, Watt didn't play. Um, just a bunch of their other defensive players didn't play. I'm rolling with the Steelers, man. I like the story of the Cleveland Browns, mm -hmm. but it's just not this year, man. I, I totally agree with both of y'all uh, and the fact that I don't really have a lot of faith in Baker Mayfield. And again, uh, and then and we're going to talk about that, the last story about quarterbacks. But I don't have a lot of faith in Baker Mayfield. And he was doing all that acting fool. And he and he let you know that I was doing this uh, because everybody was watching me. One of the wide receivers is down Hodge. One of the best offensive linemen is down uh, Patino. The damn head coach got the boo-boo flu. Uh, uh, another offensive lineman is out. Nick Harris is out. They got too many injuries. And this is the, a sad ending to an awesome story. Everybody and their mother's brother said that the Cleveland Browns was going to stink this year. They, oh, man, you know, everybody was same old sorry-ass Browns. Big up to Mandelion for always standing up next to his team. I got, I got nothing but respect for that, man. I mean, I, I understand the pain. I'm a Raiders fan, you know. I'm a Bear fan by default because I'm a Chicago and I'm always rooting for my home team. But the team that I chose for myself is the Raiders. And a lot of uh, like this is dude that me and Ant called Mud Shack. Uh, he, how you gonna be a Raiders fan? They suck. I'm like, yeah. When the last time they won the World Series, I mean, Super Bowl, I was like two years before the Bears did. When the last time they went to the Super Bowl, I was like the year before the Bears did. So. And I'm just like, I'm like, dude, you, you, you're pissing in the wind. All right. You know, it's like, you know, but the reason, again, it, it, some people may say it's an excuse, but I'm going to say this. Again, the dude who owned the Cleveland Brown is a doofus, and he's doing it wrong. He's overzealous. The same overzealous behavior belongs to Al Davis because people, he should be building for the future. I'm like, the man 85 ain't no damn future. The future is tomorrow with him. Every day is the future when you're 85 years old. So, you know. <laughs> Lauren said, Joe is kind of cute. <laughs> look, 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 look. I knew that was coming. <laughs> but uh, the question I have, before, and we're going to shut the show down with that, is this. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, is the NFL handling quarterbacks properly? Are they getting enough time? Are they looking at the dollar amount and forcing these dudes out to, into, into the field of play too early? The reason I ask this question is Sam Donald may be a serviceable quarterback. He might be Tony Romo. He might be Brad Johnson, which can get you to a Super Bowl with proper coaching. Brad Johnson actually won a Super Bowl. Uh... He could be a he could be better than the fist match. He you know, he could be in that vein. We got faith in Faker Will fail. And, and and it's been a bunch of guys when they got the proper coaching. Alex Smith, a dude that RC hates, and a lot of people don't have no faith in him. Uh, RC says Pittsburgh by 10. But uh uh but are these guys being dismissed way too soon? And the reason I ask that question is they already talking about replacing Tua. Sam Darnold plays for the Jets. That that miss that says everything. You play for the Jets. At one point, you play for the Raiders meant the same thing as you play for the Jets. And at the same time, so oh, I get drafted first. Tua had no training camp. He wasn't fully healthy, and now. They, they, look, look, look. Man, could it be a racial component to it, though? But now it's, he was 11. He had 11 touchdowns, six interceptions. And they talk about, well, maybe we need to get rid of him. And why? After your rookie season? Help me understand. What y'all? What do y'all see? What do y'all think? I mean, he had 11 touchdowns. And right, and he still got 11 touchdowns. That's a touchdown. If you get a touchdown a game, you ain't doing so bad. And your team won 10. 
What are y'all? What are y'all thoughts on that? No, no, actually, it's just the media. It's the media saying this. Uh, it's the media saying this. Nobody in Miami is this. Okay. Okay, well, you know what? I'll retract that whole statement. Because I don't think that's what it is. I think that the media is Well, in the Dolphins' defense, I wouldn't put the Dolphins in that group. Because, okay, they haven't been able to replace Dan Marino. But when Jimmy went down there, they was decent. They once they had them decent. They had a couple bad years, and then they got Chad Pennington, and they was decent. So Miami, I wouldn't put them in the Chicago Bears, uh, Raiders, Lions, Reds. Uh, Washington football team category. I wouldn't put Jets. I wouldn't put them in. Okay. But I get what you're saying. I wouldn't lump them in with the with the losers because they've been trying to they've been do, trying to do what every team in America been trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Right. The, the Raiders at this point are losers. I don't give a damn if Al Davis was trying to win right now. They still losers because Al Davis has been dead about eight years and they still been sucking. Five of them eight years. Or well, six of them eight years. You know, yeah, five. I'll say five of them eight years. So, uh, uh, so, but like I said, man, it, to me, it ain't about winning right now. It's about are you picking? See, because it's easy. I get something I hate about sports commentary is Joe from Houston is the baddest mother sucker we ever seen. That joker can every team in the league get him. And then Team X get him. And you, Get hurt three or four. You sign a five year deal, you get hurt three years. You have one good year, then you get hurt again. Why they even get Joe? Because he was the man. Because J- before Joe got to this team, he was the man. Everybody wanted him. I, I, I can't do that. I'm not. I'm refuse to do that. And a lot of these teams, again, the uh, Buffalo Bills, they fall victim to that. A lot of teams fall victim to that. And I'm not going to fall victim to, oh, man, see, they they just like the Jets. They just like the Raiders. They just like the Browns. No. You know, some of these teams just suck at running a team. And other teams don't want to win. And, uh, like, even the, even though I, I got a hex on them, like, uh, what's his name, Joe DeMai, uh, uh, uh the curse of the Mambino. Now, the, the Lions. They just suck at running a football team. I don't think they lose because, like, the Browns, the Bears, and the Redskins lose because of their ownership. Incompetence. The Raiders, the same way. The Raiders has been snake bit. I think Al Davis put so much bad juju in the universe, it's going to be four or five years before they be. They got about two more years of being bad. So, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he screwed over too many people, man. I mean, the Demarcus Allen debacle, the uh, the uh, what's the name? Art Shell debacle. Al Davis screwed too many people, and I think that's why the Raiders part of the Raiders. I, I'm I'm very I'm very serious when I say that. I think that's part of the Raiders issue of y'all suck right now because y'all didn't want to do things the right way. What do you think, Big Illinois? No, I think it's 
just that, that whole thing about the uh, everybody want to win now, but they're not putting these people in position to win now. Exactly. Just kind of like the, um, the, the, court, the backup quarterback is the most popular person on the team, except they use using first-round picks for this type of shit. So, I mean... <laughs> If you don't have, if you don't have the the coach or the personnel for that particular uh, quarterback that you're picking, I mean, that they'll never pan out, man. Right. Right. So do you? So do you? And it's like now, I mean, you know, you're you're around you know, because you're you're around you're around. Hold on, both of y'all are talking at the same time. I might still need uh, some seasoning uh, to sit. But have someone one or two years. I mean, come think about it. If um, with even Lamar Jackson, for instance, even if Lamar had somebody that he could have sat for a year, maybe a year and a half, as far as the passing aspect of it, I think he would have been better. Yeah. And Lamar's good. So it's just that I think that the, the whole NFL with the the backup situation is just kind of, um, I still don't understand why they don't draft for if somebody gets hurt. I agree. You put all your money in, in um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, but yeah, <laughs> I just don't understand the NFL, man. Yeah, I don't either. What were you saying, Joe? You asked a big Illinois question. Yeah. I was, I mean, I was more so saying. So, do you, do you pick? Do you just pick that quarterback and then try and build around him, or do you wait till you build everything you need and then get the quarterback? Because as far as it goes, in Tennessee, they have a very good opportunity, but they making everything on Ryan Tannehill, right? Well, now, but. That's kind of a tricky situation, though, because if you think about it like this, if you got the number one pick and Trevor Lawrence is sitting there, but you got, um, say Trevor Lawrence fall and don't get picked in those first two picks in you Miami, do you pick Trevor Lawrence? No, I wouldn't. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a tricky situation because no, after the consensus best player in the in the draft, some general managers pick uh, the best player as opposed to what they actually need. I, but the teams that win pick what they need. Me personally, Joe, it doesn't right. make a difference what you do. Right. But, see, the old NFL was like this. this. This is why the NFL used to be, and this is why college football is always going to be a great situation. The old NFL used to be, I picked... I see Joe Montana as my man, but I'm going to pick somebody to replace him. Like, I remember when Terry Bradshaw was getting older, there was this kid on the bench named David Woodley. David Woodley ended up going to the end of UCF, what is it? UCFF, UCFL, United, uh, some football league. It was, it, was like the, uh, 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 it was like the ABA or the NBA. You, whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, uh. And he was sitting on the bench with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, waiting on Terry Bradshaw to get old. It was this dude. He was a punter by the name of Danny White. He was the dude who was supposed to replace uh, uh, Terry uh, 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 Roger Staubach, and he actually took them to back to back NFC Championship games. Uh, you had Jeff Hosteller behind Phil Sims. You had. You had the, the Raiders drafted this bum named Mark Wilson, who could only play with a running game, and they had Jim Plunkett taking them to Super Bowls. So, back in the day, you had Ron Jaworski, one-time league MVP, the first dude to take the Philadelphia Eagles to the Super Bowl, but they drafted Randall Cunningham and let Randall Cunningham develop. A lot of time, Randall Cunningham developed. That's how the Washington Redskins won three Super Bowls in the '80s. Joe Theismann was the man. He breaks his leg. He goes to two Super Bowl, breaks his leg. And they had this, he was, he was a, he was a Rudy. I can't think his name. He had a big nose. 
or number 10, Jay Schrader. Jay Schrader. He was on the bench. And on the bench behind him was Doug Williams. And then they draft Mark Rippon to replace who who was sitting on the bench behind Doug Williams. And they kept, it was a revolving. You had Troy Aikman. And then the same year you draft uh, uh, Walsh. And then you go get uh, uh, Steve Burline from the Raiders. And then you go get, when you lose Burline, you go get uh, uh, Bernie Kozar, who was killing it with the Browns. So everybody, as, as Big Illinois said, everybody used to have a succession plan. And these dudes out here just like, whatever. We, we doing, we gonna, we, we doing what we got to do. Which is kind of stupid. Because if you're doing what you got to do and it ain't working, like, why would you put Tua out there with no training camp? And then start talking about replacing that's just stupid, man. It makes absolutely zero sense that you got two out there and nothing to replace them with. Uh, Chief Rocket say the vote in, in Georgia is close to uh, the Democrats and women. He was a punter, too. Yeah, Danny White was a punter. Yep, he was a punter. Danny White. So, hey, Randall Cunningham. Hey, fun fact. Randall Cunningham was the best punter in the NCAA the year he got drafted. He said NCAA punting records. So, uh, uh, and before we get up out of here, the last thing we're going to talk about is the National Football League MVP. Either one of y'all can take the floor. I'll, I'll close out. Take the floor and your parting shot. No, oh, no, no. We do parting shots in a minute. You want to go Big Illinois. Man, I was uh, I was debating. I, I, Aaron Rodgers didn't had the uh, all world season going to a wide open receiver, but that's that's something else. But um, you know what, man? I I, I might have to agree with Joe, man. I think Derrick Henry, man, that. He carried that thing. Ah! <laughs> Let's go. Hey. 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 And uh, somebody had brought up Derek Henry in the middle of the season. And I was like, man, that's what they do is enough to, to carry. But he carried that team, man. Um, oh, somebody was me. If I was voting, I, I would go... Uh, Derrick Henry, Josh Allen, and then Aaron Rodgers. And that, that's not the Bear fan in me hating. He's just he be throwing some wide open receivers, man. I, I just, I don't, that, that don't, that, 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 that ain't really, uh, no pressure on him, man. But anyway, but I mean, he's, he's killing though. So, 48 touchdowns, you can't beat that, man. So, he's going to end up winning it, but. Yeah, Henry should get um, a lot of first place votes. Um, I'm with Joe. 
I definitely think um, Derrick Henry is the league MVP. And it goes back to what John, is, you know what, we, go, we got one more topic then. Uh, John Sally made this statement. I want y'all's opinion on that. Um, uh, um, I think Derrick Henry is clearly the league MVP. Uh, we can talk about Tannehill stats, but when Tannehill was in uh, Miami, was he looking that good? He ain't learned nothing over these last few weeks. It's just when you got a safety in the box and you got the entire line, just like when uh, Lamar Jackson runs the ball, they always do additional motion as if Lamar Jackson going to take the outside. All the linebackers key on him, and then the running back gets a ride up and walk, he get a walk into the end zone. He get a one on one with a defender going into the end zone, make it look like he like they got the whole play wrong. And that's the same thing with Derrick Henry. You got two safe, two high safeties, and then you got linebackers that are taking steps back. And then when you when you gonna hand it to Derrick Henry. Everybody comes in. He's throwing the one on one throughout the uh, uh, whole uh, secondary. So I'm not respecting those numbers. I don't respect any numbers in the National Football League anymore because y'all made it so people cannot defend you. So I'm trying to hit. And two, uh, 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 it just I'm tired. They 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 are always trying to uh, 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 take the value away from this running back. And every time you turn around. Drew Brees don't look like Drew Brees without a running game. Tom Brady don't look like Tom Brady without a running game. Nobody looks big time without a running game unless you are super duper special. Like, Patrick Mahomes looks special without a running game, but that's Patrick Mahomes. Dan Marino was looking special without a running game. That's Dan Marino. That's John Elway. So, unless you are the cream of the crop, unless you warm moon, John Elway, Joe Montana, uh, 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 you are looking extremely average without the running game. So, no, I, it's the running, it's, 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 yeah, Henry, Henry's the league MVP. John Sally, and then we're going to go, John Sally made this statement, which made me go, wow. Uh, again, another dude who knew nothing about sport, DJ Blatt. Blatt was like, uh, 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 did Giannis Antetokounmpo deserve to be league MVP? And John Sally said, no. He said, but he is the most valuable player to the league. He said they rode the LeBron train as long as they could, but LeBron James is political, so they don't want to, they don't want to attach themselves to that political thing. They they don't mind LeBron doing that, but LeBron James at the end of his run, he said the league MVP is not the best player. It's the dude that is most valuable to the league, and to that you guys say what? I understand what they're saying 100%, and I've been saying that for years. Because even the people that have had the best quote unquote season didn't win MVP. You know, we said that when 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 Steph won his first cup, he was like, well, James Harden was doing his thing. You know, James Harden did it with Clint Stella. He did it with uh, Dwight Howard, only played 15 games. You know, he did it with his best player being me and you. Like, we, we understand it's more so it's the who's the best face of the league in regards to who's going to MVP. You know, the way we talk about how they cut LeBron, you know, his, his interview up talking about, you know, what the best player in the MVP. Right, right. But the way the league cut it, it's just like, oh, it's definitely the best player on the, for the league, but I'm the best player overall. So it, it's, it's weird. It, it, it's real weird. MVP is more so popularity mode with regards to who they, like you said, who can be the political face of the league. Big Illinois? Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's, even though um, LeBron, in most cases, he had the league in the fifth at that age, and he's been in the league this long. I mean, you could make an argument for him being the MVP every year. It's kind of like that Jordan argument, and that's the, the issue that Mahomes, if he continues to play like he's playing now, he will run into this area too. Where even though they the best players in the league, there's always going to be somebody that, like a Carl Malone that's going to sneak up and have a good stretch of one or two years that's going to end up being the, the best player or the MVP for that particular year. That don't mean that they the best player in the league. 
Right. It just means that they had the best year. Right. Most valuable to the league. Right. Other than, you know, because a lot of people don't like voting for the same people. Like, I don't, I'm not a LeBron hater, but I don't want to see the Lakers on TV all the time now. I want to see somebody else. I mean that's not me hating on LeBron. I'm just that's a, everybody. You don't you, you get tired of seeing the Patriots or or back in the '90s or the '80s when we were the Raiders used to be on and at, at the three o'clock on uh, ABC every week. <laughs> that's how I became a Raider fan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's saying, Joe? What? Hey, hey, let me let me play devil's advocate. Hey, but what if the Spurs were on all the time in every single championship? Would you get tired of that, son? Hey, man, that's different. I'm just, uh, my mom, no, I just, uh, yeah. And see, that's why, that's why, that's why I never make that statement. I'm tired of a team winning. Because if y'all winning, y'all winning. But the, that's one thing about the National Football League in recent history. Well, I would say over the last 25 years. Since the I would say since the uh, well actually thirty since the eighties they uh, uh they uh, uh uh everybody's on TV to, to watch the Redskins on TV the Cleveland Browns on TV the Bengals on TV everybody gets a national uh, nationally televised game it's easy to do that with sixteen games or well, then again it might be a little harder because you still want to showcase the talent but. Everybody was such a condensed schedule, but he's right. But I don't. I, I never say I'm tired of them winning. I'm tired. I, you do get tired of them being on TV, but the, for, for, uh, for the most part, the uh, NFL does a great job, but the NBA does a horrible job because this dude's out. I've never seen Mitch Richmond play on TV. Well, when Mitch Richmond was with the Sacramento Kings, I never seen him play on TV. Could be because they were horrible. But it all, at the same time, why the hell aren't the Sacramento t- Kings on TV? But you'll put the Bulls, you'll put the Knicks. You'll put the Bulls and the Knicks on every Martin Luther King day. But, but the Dallas Mavericks back in the day, most people never don't know who Rondo Blackman is. Don't know who Mark Aguirre is, Sam Perkins, James Donaldson, uh, 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 Roy Tarkman. They've never seen those guys play. You never saw the Supersonics play with McDaniels and McKee and Ellis and Chambers. How the hell aren't they on TV on a regular basis? So, yeah, they they do it. The NBA is the worst at that. They do a piss poor job, and they really need to get that in order. But with that being said, it's time to hit the wrap it up button, man. Yeah, it's definitely time to hit the wrap it up button. We got 90 seconds before we go on. Make it brief. Let's get up out of here. Uh, I'm going to be on for the next week, man. I'll be on at a reasonable time, so I'll be, I'll cut my hair so I can be on the TV with y'all, man. <laughs> All right, man. As I say every week. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everybody that, that, came, that came out. Um, appreciate it. Be safe out there with your mask. Happy New Year. Stay five. All right, continue to subscribe. Well, basically hit the subscribe button. Continue to support. Thank you for tuning in. This is HRIB. Uh, you on the tomorrow, Big Illinois? Big Illinois. I guess he's not on tomorrow. Oh, well, tune in. Continue to support the network. Uh, as I say every week, dream those dreams and man up and woman up, live those dreams. It's life without dreams, flows in black and white, life with dreams. Flow some Technicolor surround sound. Please continue to support. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Do your thing. Uh, two fingers, one word. This is your man, H. Rob B. This is Bill for this network. Joe from uh, Houston, Big Illinois. We are out. <laughs>